the most important part of tonight's meeting, we're going to talk about the 2018 election. People, this is not a drill. It's here. It's upon us. The clock is ticking. This is the moment that we've been waiting for. We have 98 days until the primary election. We have 271 days until the general election. We have to get to work. Everyone's got to really start moving now and getting involved in the election process. We're going to talk a little bit tonight about what that involves and what we can all do to start to get the ball rolling. Here's some of the really important primary dates that are coming up. Next Tuesday, February 13th, begins the nominating petition circulation period. That lasts for two weeks. Every, every position that is going to be on the ballot, with the exception of congressional candidates, will be circulating petitions from the 13th until the 6th. The congressional candidates will have their new districts drawn by February 19th. They should be signed, sealed, and delivered. And then the congressional candidates will circulate petitions from February 27th to March 20th. April 16th is the last day for you, your family, your neighbors, anyone that's not registered to vote. That's the last day they can register if they want to vote in the primary. Remember, in the primary election, only Democrats and Republicans can vote. If you think you want to participate in the primary election, but you're not registered in one of those two parties, April 16th is going to be the last day that you can change your registration to one of those parties. If you're not going to be in town for the election, you need an absentee ballot picked up no later than May 8th and delivered to the County Board of Elections by May 11th. And circle your calendar now because May 15th is the big day. That's the primary election. If you have any questions, I think it's always a good idea to know the website that you have to go to for information. And that's at the bottom of the screen. These are the offices that are going to be on the ballot this year. We have uh, Senator Casey is up for re-election. As are all of the representatives in Congress in Berks County, Costello, Smucker, Meehan, and Dent. All of those positions will be on the ballot this year. Governor Wolf is up for re-election. Lieutenant Governor Stack is up for re-election. Senators in the Pennsylvania General Assembly, uh, that half of them are up for re-election, half of them are not. Some of them get elected on even years, others get elected on odd years. That's why you may or may not see your senator, your state senator on the ballot. All of the House representatives in the Pennsylvania General Assembly will be on the ballot. And on the primary ballot, you will also see Democratic state and local committee people and Republican state and local committee people, depending what party you're in. In the general election, the governor and the lieutenant governor are combined, and they will be elected as one unit in the fall. And your state and local committee members are only on the primary ballot. So again, if you want to say in how your political party is run, you'll want to vote in the primaries and be sure that you're electing people to represent you at the county level and at the state level in your political party. Getting out the vote starts with the nominating petition process. And I think that some of you are probably asking, what's a petition and why do I care? There's a lot of people who have never signed a petition and a lot of people that don't even know it's important. Some people would argue that the petition signing process is the most important part of the election. If you cannot get your name on the ballot, you can't win an election. So that's why the nominating petition process is more important than people realize. Since we have a closed primary, you will only see petitions being circulated for Republicans and Democrats. This is your chance to have a say in who you think deserves an opportunity to be on the ballot. There's some basic petition guidelines, and I'm hoping that everyone that's on this call signs some petitions. And I hope your friends do, and I hope your neighbors do. 
Candidates are going to require varying numbers of signatures depending on what position they're going for. Local committee people need 10 signatures. They'll try to get 30, but they only need 10. The governor will need 2,000 signatures, and he will try to get at least 6,000. So every position requires different numbers. But it's very important that the petition rules are followed very carefully because if anything on the petition is incorrect, the opposing candidate is going to have seven days to look closely at your petitions and challenge any signatures that they think could have been forged, could be incorrect, might be a member that's not in the party. They look for all sorts of mistakes on the petitions and it can sometimes get ugly. If you're signing petitions, this spring or next week, you can only sign one petition per open seat. So if you sign a petition for one of the people running for Lieutenant Governor, that's the only Lieutenant Governor petition you can sign. You have to be a member of the same party. If you are a Democrat, you cannot sign a Republican's petition and vice versa. And you have to live in the district that they would represent. So obviously, if you're signing Governor Wolf's petition, you can live anywhere in Pennsylvania. But if you're signing my local candidate's petition here in the 128th, you have to live in the 128th district. So it's very important that you know who's going to represent your area when you sign. And you have to sign the way you sign your voting record. My full name is Deborah Noel. I will sign Deborah Noel. My dad used to call me Swifty. I can't sign Swifty Noel because then my signature would get thrown out. Look really carefully at the headings when you sign a petition. This is one of those instances where I think sometimes the election process is set up to make things just a little bit more difficult for people. Notice that the signature comes before the printed name, then your address. And this red circle is where people oftentimes get messed up. If your address is Reading, but you live in Why I'm Missing, you put Why I'm Missing in here you don't put the address that you put on your mailing envelope. You would put why I'm missing. The same thing goes for Exeter. Your address is probably Reading, but you would put Exeter in this area. They want the city or borough or township where you vote. I live in Morgantown, but I would put Robison Township. And then another little trick, I think, is that the last column where most people are thinking they're going to be writing their zip code is where you write the date. So you wanna be really careful that you put the date there, not your zip code, because if you put the wrong thing, you get challenged. Here's an example of what someone did. This person you can tell wrote the addresses of all of the people who they were gathering signatures from. Some of the signatures look suspect too, I'm not sure, but you can tell it was forged and the entire petition was tossed. The person that is signing the petition has to be the one that writes the information across the line. So candidates really need their circulators to be accurate and they need people to be honest. There are some petitions where you can sign more than one person. For instance, the Democratic State Committee and the Republican State Committee. Berks County has seven Democratic seats allotted for the state. You might sign Patty Rose's petition because she's running for the state committee. But hey, you heard Sherry Green might be running for the state committee too, and you want her to have the opportunity to be on the ballot. Well, you can sign hers too, because in that case, multiple people and multiple positions are open for the state committee. So that's the one exception to being able to sign multiple petitions. 
So what can you do to help with the petition process? Like I said, many of you have probably never signed petitions before, or you never went to a petition signing party. You didn't realize how important it was, but this is really our first opportunity as members of Indivisible to get involved and get people excited and get moving on the election and do your part to start getting the energy vibrating throughout the county. So what you can do is you can circulate a nominating petition. Maybe you have a candidate that you think deserves to be on the ballot. You can circulate their petition for them. They'll give you a list of people that you can go knock on their doors and ask them to sign. And by signing the petition, it doesn't mean that someone's necessarily going to vote for that person. It just means that they think they deserve the opportunity to be on the ballot. So it's really pretty easy to fill up a petition. You can host a petition signing party, let people come into your home, or you can attend a petition signing party. If there's a candidate that you really like and you'd like to see them on the ballot, you can reach out to their campaign. They would really appreciate the help. You can find out who's running by visiting our website, indivisibleburks.org. We list all of the candidates as we become aware of them. Can you do anything else? Yeah, you can run for office. Maybe you're not ready for prime time. Maybe you don't like how things are going in your political party. So become a local committee person. Why not? You can make a change in your local politics. You can be the person that canvasses in your neighborhood. You can be the person that makes sure everyone in your little community is registered to vote. And you get to have a voice in Berks County. And maybe you'd even want to one day be on the state committee and have a voice at the state level. Things aren't going to change. If we're not happy with how things are going with this two-party system, or if you're not happy with some of the decisions that are made, then take the opportunity to have a voice. There's a lot of petition trainings and parties that are coming up. Here are a few, and there will be more. On February 10th, there's going to be a training for circulators at 16 Estates Drive in Exeter. On the 15th, at 6.30 p.m., most likely at the Governor Mifflin High School, there's going to be a training for circulators that live in the 128. And if you don't want to be trained that day, you can still come and sign petitions if you would like. Same thing on February 17th, 11.30 in the morning at the Robison Lutheran Church if you live in Southern Berks County, and one o'clock again at 16 Estates Drive. Again, if you don't want to be trained to circulate, you can still stop in here and sign petitions. And there's going to be more. There will be a petition training, a petition signing party in Honeybrook on February 18th. So if you're in Rafferty's Senate District, Katie Muth is running for that petition, for that position, and she will be in Honeybrook for this signing party. February 19th. You can grab dinner and go sign a petition. The Burks Dems are having a signing social at Esposito's Italian Restaurant. And then again on the 24th and 25th at Estates Drive. There will be many more and we'll post them as they become available and when we know the dates will be. We would love to see you come out and sign as many petitions as you can for as many positions that are going to be on the ballot. There's more. If you like what we're doing and you would like to be more involved, we would love to have you join us. Write down this link, it's a short little bit.ly link, and that will take you to our page that talks about some of the volunteer opportunities in Indivisible Berks. We're looking for people that can give us 15 minutes a week or people that can give us two hours a week. If you think you'd like to get more involved, check us out. We'd appreciate hearing from you.